Today we're going to read a book called Desert Voices by Bird, Baylor, and Peter Parnell. I hope you enjoyed writing last time by choosing a sentence that you liked and building off of that into creating a story just off of a sentence that you already wrote. I think that's a neat little trick. It helped me come up with a lot of fun ideas and it's never ending because you can keep taking new sentences that you write and making new stories out of them. So each story can create many stories from that. Desert Voices. Listen to what the author does with the voices of the animals in the desert. Pack rat. I run to whatever is shiny, find out about anything new. I sniff a gleaming mica chip, a feather that falls from the sky, a pale blue turquoise bead, a button, the top of an old tin can, and the pipe that a miner smoked by his campfire and left on the ground while he slept. I take it all. I am a gatherer of treasure, of leaves and berries and roots, mesquite beans, sweet red summer cactus fruit, and a piece of clear glass bottle turned purple by the sun. I stay close to home, close to the trails I know, close to the rocks where I was born, close to the chola cactus. I climb so easily, everything I want is here. In the cool evenings I search, Starting from rock to rock, out of sight of the coyotes and owls, I run back and forth with my mouth full of treasures. I go home at sunrise, pushing and pulling and rolling all the good things back to my nest. My pile of sticks and dirt and chola cactus thorns, it holds me safe. It hides my shining secrets in the dust. What did the author do right there? Who was narrating the story? From what point of view? Do you know, Charlie? Um, it seemed like the narrator was the pack rat, talking about all the things that they like to gather up. I think. Yep, exactly. So you'll see it throughout more of this book that there's different poems told from the point of view of the animals in the desert. Let's read another one. Jackrabbit. The sudden leap, the instant start, the burst of speed, knowing when to run and when to freeze, how to become a shadow underneath a greasewood bush. These are things I learned almost at birth. Now, I lie on the shadow side of a clump of grass. My long ears bring me every far off footstep, every twig that snaps, every rustle in the weeds. I watch Coyote move from bush to bush. I wait, he's almost here. Now, now I go like a zigzag lightning flash with my ears laid back, I sail. Jumping gullies and bushes and rocks, doubling back, circling, jumping high, to see where my enemy is. Warning rabbits along the way, I go. I hardly touch the ground, and suddenly I disappear. Let coyotes stand there, sniffing old jackrabbit trails. Where I am now is a jackrabbit secret. Ooh, I like that. Let's read one more. Rattlesnake. I move so flat against the earth that I know all its mysteries. I understand the way the sun clings to rocks after the sun is gone. I understand long, cold shadows that wrap themselves around me and slow my blood and call me back into the earth. On the south side of a rocky slope, where the sun can warm my hiding place, I wait for the cold that draws me into sleep. I understand, waking in spring, still cold, hardly moving, seeking warmth, seeking food, going from darkness to light. I understand the shedding of old skin and the tenderness of my new, soft, shining self, 
flowing smooth as water over sand. I understand the sudden strike, the death I hold behind my fangs. Wherever I go, I cast a shadow of fear. Ooh, I like that one. There's a bunch more. I'm not going to read all of them. You can check this book out. It's called Desert Voices by Bird Baylor and Peter Parnell. If you were going to write in the voice of an animal, what animal would you choose? What about you, Charlie? What would you choose? I think I'd choose um, a hawk or a sea turtle. Using that animal voice, what might you write? I might write something about flying over the trees and being able to see everything. Or if I were a turtle, I'd write about gliding in the ocean and being calm and relaxed. Yeah, that's what I do. We're gonna do a quick write now. This quick write is gonna be using the voice of the animal and writing about if you were that animal. What do you see? What do you do? What do you feel? What do you want? What do you wish? What do you sense? Do you smell, see, hear, taste? Hopefully your imagination can run wild. If you run out of things to say as one animal, choose another animal and write from that point of view. So you have five minutes. Remember, quick write means move your hand, Writing the entire time, if it gets painful and starts hurting, shake it out, take a break, look around for ideas, but try to keep your hand moving for five minutes. I know you can do it, and we're gonna get better and better the more we do this. So keep practicing, all right? Five minutes, timer starting now. Go!
Was it easy or hard to write from the point of view of an animal? For today's writing lesson, again, you're gonna write from 15 to 20 minutes, longer than the beginning of the year, but you can do it. And you have three choices as always. You could continue the quick write and write poetry or stories from the point of view as if you were an animal. It could be a poem, like what we read today in Desert Voices, or it could be a story something happens. So that's your first choice. Second choice is to go to the back of your writing ideas section and start a new piece of writing. Or you can continue a story that you started earlier. Okay, have fun and let your imagination run wild.